our captain discovered that a piece of the ancient map whose treasure we were seeking was stolen. Throughout our investigation, we have gathered evidence proving that the ship, that shipwright man worked with Dr. Smart to steal the map and cause chaos on our ship. Now we, we will present the evidence we have discovered. Surprise, surprise, Ness and Dr. Smart are guilty, but we still have to fix up everyone's injuries. Let's start with wings and splints. First, to use an arm splint on a forearm, you have to fit, the, fit it to the arm. Next, you will make a C-bend to help better fit the arm. Last, you will take an ACE bandage and wrap it tightly around the splint. But if it is an ankle injury, there are a few different steps to properly put the splint on. First, put the middle of the splint under the injured foot. Then, take one side of the splint and cross it over to the other ankle and pull it tight. Repeat with the other side of the splint. Then, take an ACE bandage and wrap the splint to secure. We have now finished all of the bone injuries. Now it is time for the lungs. On the ship, someone had a collapsed lung. The lungs help you deliver oxygen to your body parts. If there is a collapsed lung, you can do needle or chest tube insertion, surgery, and or observation. The lungs are a very important part of the respiratory system. To help better understand them, we made a model. This is how it works. The balloon in the center represents the lung, and when it inflates, that means you're breathing in, and when it deflates, that means you're breathing out to give oxygen to your body. We did a lot of engineering at Passways to STEM. We made embots out of motors and screws. We were able to, to we were all we were all able to make embots, and and this is what they look like. We made and coded embots. We made them by putting different pieces and parts together. Two of our shipmates were lost on the island, so we had to program our embots to travel across the island to save them. It looks like this. Lastly, you can build a truss bridge or stall, straw for your embot to get across. You and your team have to measure the height length width so your embot can get across. And if you succeed, to help the people who are stranded on the island. And after we found Neff and, and Young, we found out Neff kidnapped Young. During the program, we learned about four snakes: the Malayan pit viper, the red the red-tailed green rat snake, and the band the banded crate and the king cobra. The banded crate and the king cobra have neurotoxic venom, while the red-tailed green rat snake is non-venomous. The Malay, the Malayan pit viper, though, has hemotoxic venom. Neurotoxins attack the nerves. When you get attacked by a neurotoxic snake, the symptoms are mild pain with swelling and muscle weakness. When you're bit by a hemotoxic snake, you will have immediate pain, swelling, bleeding, and tissue damage. Hemotoxins attack the bloodstream and rats the flesh. If you're walking at night to go somewhere and got bit by a snake, you should stay calm, identify the snake, then call 911. During our time at Pathways to STEM, we had to find out which snake bit Cindy Young so we could give her the right treatment to help her. After, after we found out important information and considered all the snakes, we figured out it was the Malayan pit viper. After we figured out what snake bit her, we could give her the right treatment. One of our crew members had a heart problem, so we had to dissect another heart so we could understand the treatment they were giving. And while we were learning about the human heart, I learned you can get heart attacks. Basically, the heart attack is when your heart stops be beating properly because it's not getting enough blood. And heart attacks occur when an artery has blockage due to built-up fat called plaque. And if the plaque breaks off, it forms a blood clot. So when the heart doesn't receive blood, it is damaged. So if you think you might have a heart attack, the symptoms are dull pain uh, in the chest that can radiate to your arm or jaw, shortness of breath, and sweating or nausea. Our group was assigned to do the blood splatter analysis and to do Dr. Neff 
and Dr. Smart's justice for stealing the ancient map, or piece of the ancient map, in now We have proof that Nap was a criminal. He had the gash on his forehead and his mallet was at the crime scene. We shall explain our evidence now. We concluded that Nap was a criminal because the blood splat was 15.9 inches draw up and was no, 15.9 millimeters in diameter and was closest to the average of our 30 inch drop and it, the 30 inch drop is a private information. We also have the story from Mrs. Young. Because of NIF injury, we believe the blood fell on the ground. We will show the blood by now. We have more evidence on Dr. Smart than we have now. We are going to talk about forensic science today. Throughout the week, we were doing a CSI, crime scene investigation. Here is some extra evidence on Dr. Smart and Neff. Our evidence was that there was a mysterious powder and we had to figure out what it was. We figured out this out by testing iodine, water, and vinegar to see what the reaction was to different powders, which were baking soda, cornstarch, cream of tartar, and powdered sugar. We found out that the mysterious powder was cornstarch and Dr. Smart had cornstarch in the sunburn medicine he gave to Neff. The next thing we did was fingerprinting, which that led us to Dr. Smart and Neff. When we did fingerprinting, we learned that there are three types of fingerprints. Arches, loops, and loops, whirls. And after fingerprinting, that led us to our answer. When we analyzed our fingerprints, we found out it was Dr. Smart. Based on all the evidence our STEM group has submitted, we believe that Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff were guilty of stealing the ancient map. 